Are you currently pregnant and worried about developing pelvic girdle pain? If this is you, keep listening because I'm going to share why I personally don't program and don't recommend two very common pieces of equipment in the gym during pregnancy, the seated hip adductor and seated hip abductor machines. Now, I totally understand my perspective may be controversial to some strength coaches, but I do have four very good reasons for avoiding these machines. Reasons that relate to the significant changes your body goes through in creating and birthing new life, being joint laxity, changes in muscle strength, the deep linear alba and pubic symphysis connection, and protecting your pelvic floor. And you have to remember, your pelvis is one of the main joints in your body. It helps transfer load from your upper to lower body, supports your abdominal organs, and acts as an attachment point for some of the strongest muscles in your body. Now, I totally understand anatomy can be a little bit confusing, so I'm gonna break it down really simply. So your pelvis is made up of two iliac bones, which are joined together at the front by your pubic symphysis and at the back by your sacroiliac joint. And we know during pregnancy, hormones like relaxin cause increased laxity or loosening of the pelvic girdle ligaments allowing greater mobility of the pubic symphysis and the sacroiliac joints. Now, of course, this laxity has a very important purpose, which is to help widen the pelvic outlet, which is the bottom part of the pelvis for birth. But the downside of this is it can also lead to pelvic instability and pain. And when you think about this specifically in relation to the hip abductor and adductor machines, you can see these movements may place increased pressure on both the pubic symphysis at the front and sacroiliac joints at the back, two joints that are already potentially unstable in pregnancy. And from an abductor perspective, you have a really wide opening of the legs, opening out the pubic symphysis at the front and potentially impacting the SIJ at the back and vice versa on the adductor. Of course, I totally understand from a muscle strengthening perspective, we need to keep the muscles of the hip as strong as possible during pregnancy to help support the pelvis. But especially when pregnancy can lead to muscle weakness, muscle imbalances and compensatory patterns of muscles around the pelvis. And gluten core weakness during pregnancy are really common. And there's certainly areas that we absolutely need to focus on, which is understandably why some people might turn to the seated hip abductor machines. But when it comes to your adductors and the seated hip adductor, one of the reasons why I personally don't program this exercise is because of a common compensatory pattern of the adductors due to the weakness in your core and glutes. And this is kind of along the same lines as the anterior pelvic tilt during pregnancy, causing increased tightness in your hip flexor, quads and calves. But when it comes to your adductors, this is where protecting your pelvic floor comes into play because there is a very deep fascial connection between your adductors and your pelvic floor. In a recent study into the effects of hip adduction and abduction contraction on the pelvic floor in young healthy women showed the pelvic floor was pushed downward when the adductor and abductor were contracted isometrically with max effort compared to a resting position. And what this study showed was an increase in intra-abdominal pressure when performing these efforts. And when the abdominal pressure increased in relation to the diaphragm and the abdominal walls, the pelvic floor couldn't exert enough force to counter this pressure, causing it to descend. We've got to take into account these studies weren't done on pregnant women who may also have weakness through the abdominal wall, which then poses the question, would this cause the intra-abdominal pressure to push out through the weakest link, which could be either the abdominal wall due to abdominal separation or down through the pelvic floor or both? But I think the main point to remember when it comes to this is that we want to try and minimize any of this incorrectly contained intra-abdominal pressure. But this does bring me back to the link between the linear alba and pubic symphysis, 
So for those who don't know, the linea alba is a band of connective tissue that connects all of your abdominals together. And from a superficial perspective, it's what gives you the line between your six pack. But on a deeper level, it joins all of your abdominals. So your rectus abdominis or your six pack, your external oblique, your internal oblique, and then almost tucks into your transverse abdominis, like tucking your t-shirt into the front of your jeans, right? But the thing is, it actually doesn't stop there. At a very deep level, your linear alba attaches to your pubic symphysis at the front of your pelvis. And when it comes to the linear alba during pregnancy, it's already under a lot of pressure from your growing baby bump, making it a potential weak point in your pregnant body that needs protecting as much as possible. So when you think of that wide opening of the seated hip abductor, you can see how in combination with a weakened linear alba that attaches to your pubic symphysis, this movement might place pressure on your pubic symphysis. And when you look at Australian statistics, suggesting 44% of women experience pubic synthesis pain during pregnancy, you can kind of see why I personally might avoid programming anything that could cause or aggravate this. So, of course, if I'm telling you to stay away from the adductor and abductor machines, you're probably wondering what you can do instead to help keep your hips and glutes and core strong during pregnancy. Well, of course, I've got three great exercise progressions for you because a key point I want to make in this video is that it's about the machines and exercise, not the muscle groups. And there are two really important muscle groups, the abductor targets in the glutes, being the glute men and glute med, that we really want to make sure we're targeting during pregnancy and keeping strong. And three progressions that I love for this are your lying straight leg clamp. And I've even found this exercise is okay for those who are experiencing pelvic girdle pain, likely because you're very supported in a sideline position and only moving one leg at a time. Of course, you can add a resistance band if you like, and for those well-trained, you can add these as part of your warm-ups or as a wee little glute burner at the end. And no doubt two to three sets of 15 will actually have you feeling that. And progressing from there, you have a bench-supported side-lying abduction. Again, you are very supported in this position and only working one leg. And you can make this exercise harder by adding a resistance band or using ankle weights by dropping your foot behind your body and lowering it closer to the floor. So these things will make this exercise harder. And the cable standing single leg hip abduction is a great exercise for connecting the pathway from your glute to your core, helping make the whole area more stable. And I love this exercise because you're working the stabilizing leg as well. So when done correctly, it's almost like two exercises in one. And of course, there are many, many, many other exercises that target these muscle groups. However, these are three that I personally like using, which are accessible from beginner all the way through to advanced level, depending on how you program them. So while the seated hip abductor and abductor machines may seem beneficial for pregnancy, I personally avoid them due to the increased pelvic instability, changes in muscle strength, the potential strain on the linear alba and pubic symphysis, and the potential impact on an already taxed pelvic floor. Instead, exercises like straight leg clams, side lying leg abduction, and standing cable abductions work those same muscle groups in a more supported, controlled way. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, so feel free to drop me a comment below. And of course, if you want more in-depth, pregnancy-specific content, feel free to apply to my complimentary but private community, the Priggy Training Crew. The link is in my bio.